Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. And the end of another week and the end of our poll. We've got a very solid win for Rifts Atlantis. For the Rifts role-playing game, the first Rifts book we've featured for over two years. So great stuff. Now I'll have a look at that on the tabletop in just a wee second. And as usual, I'll be back at the end of the video with some other poll related stuff and some other channel related stuff. But we remind us that if you'd like to help the channel out, or you'd like to see these videos a week early, or you'd like to get involved in the polls when they're actually valid instead of when they close when these videos usually get released to the general audience, then we've got a Patreon in the description down below. You can see the different levels we're offering. And I'm just about to launch some new levels with some idiot ideas that I've had of different things I can offer you. So check them out, see how you can help out, it'd be very much appreciated. Anyway, let's have a look at Rifts Atlantis. So, this is Rifts Atlantis, or more properly entitled Atlantis, Rifts World Book 2, from Palladium Books and came out in 1992. Now, while I have my problems with the Rifts role-playing game, I really do think it could have done with an extra edition to fix a lot of the rules. There's massive power creep in the game. But the one thing that Rifts is not lacking is imagination. It is absolutely brilliant. It's why I have a shelf full of Rifts books, because they are just an absolute joy to look through. There's so many ideas, so many concepts, all thrown together in fascinating uh, combinations. And Atlantis is a perfect example of this. Because while bringing Atlantis back into the Rifts world is a very simple idea, you know, the idea of a high technology, high magic culture returned from ancient times. They've put a twist on this. So, in Rifts, a nuclear war has caused rifts across the planet to open up, which allow aliens and magical creatures and fantasy creatures to enter into the world, leading to this nexus of all different cultures mashing together. And indeed, they've said that when Atlantis existed in ancient times, it activated the rifts with its high technology and high magic and disappeared into the multiverse and has now returned. But during its time away, Atlantis, with its powerful beings on it, you know, the ancient Atlanteans, has basically been conquered and enslaved. This alien race known as the Splugorth have taken over it and have enslaved the people there. They've built on it. So the Atlantis which has returned isn't this idealistic place, um, absolutely idyllic. It is messed up with aliens who want to bring their very alien concepts of enslavement and control to Earth. And this is so core to Rifts that the Splugorth, who have done this, are on the cover of the main rulebook. But anyway, let's have a look at the back cover. Palladium Books Rifts World Book 2 Atlantis. Includes the Splugworth and their minions, complete stats and rogue player characters. Over 20 optional player races like the Ancient Atlanteans, a Tattooed Men, Sunage Assassins, Undead Slayers, Zembark, Adarok and many optional play monster characters, including Rogue Minion of Splugworth. The Secrets of Rune Magic and many new rune weapons. Biowizardry, Magic Transmutation and Augmentation, Parasites and Symbiotic Organisms. New Tattoo Magic and the Tattooed Men, including T-Men, Maxi-Men, T-Monster Men and Undead Slayer. Atlantis, its past, present and future. The City of Dragons, Ancient Dragons and a whole lot more. 160 pages. And inside, well, the artwork Palladium's done has always been fantastic. There's so many great pictures in here that flicking through just gives you ideas on what to do in Rift's Adventures, even if you don't want to read all the pages. Um, an advert for the 1993 uh, calendar and t-shirts. Um, different cool looking robots. A rather large contents page. And then we're into Atlantis Reborn. Some words from the author and a note about the contents. Then we've got Erin Tarn, who is this historian who travels the Rift's world, documenting it out amongst the source books. So it's written largely in a in-character, in-world way. So, we've got Atlantis and the Bermuda Triangle. I think we all thought the Bermuda Triangle was going to be a lot more part of our life when we were young. Um, various facts about it, various rumours. 
the Demon Sea and the Bermuda Triangle detailed. Sea monsters which attack you in that area. Then we're on to Atlantis and the True Atlanteans. You know, talking through ancient Atlantis, what its history was. The descendants from human Atlanteans, the True Atlanteans. These are extremely long-lived, powerful humans. And they come as their RCC, their own uh, racial character class. Atlantean nomads, occupational character classes, undead slayers. And then the Splugworths Atlantis. So, the Atlantis that it kind of is now, that the Splugworth have conquered it. And we go through Splugworthian architecture, how slaves are a major part of their culture. General regional. Some absolutely gorgeous artwork of high-tech futuristic cities. Um, the refuge, the preserves, hunting on it, gargoyle kingdoms, uh, the great stone mountains. Just so many pieces of information. The gargoyles capital city of Alvaron. The Valley of Wonder. And we go round the Isle of Atlantis like this, detailing what is happening in each area. So we've got Dragon, Dragona, the City of Dragons. The city, uh, places within the city. The modern cult of Dragonrite. Uh, I'm not even going to try and... Stifatal? Stifathal? Stifathal. Yes, it's got pronunciation there. That's useful. The Corruptor, Stung of Stifon. I Kaitalan, Metzazin, with very South American style pyramids. The City of Splin, so where the Splugorth are from. Then we go on to the Splugorth and their minions. All Splugorth are good to excellent strategists and tacticians with eons of experience to draw upon. These are extremely powerful villains. Absolutely ancient, um, implacable aliens. Hostile to humans, or hostile to human culture. Um, humans themselves can stay on as slaves. We've got the minions of Splugorth, so Splugorth High Lords. Conservators. Various overlords, so Kydians who are loyal minions. Splugorth Savers, uh, uh, Slavers, sorry. Blind warrior women, because that's the sort of image off the cover of the original rifts with the slaver and the blind warrior woman. The Kitani, very intelligent uh, tinkerers, and we'll see a lot of their equipment over the following pages, because they make very high-tech equipment, which absolutely looks alien while incredibly advanced at the same time. But we'll see. So we've got Kitani field mechanics, scientists, espionage agents... The Metzler, um, incredibly alien looking. Morovamaz Metzler, Creelong Carapaces, the Sunage, who are an assassin like race, obviously much in shadow there, looking very deadly. The Splugworth Slave st uh, Stock. With different races, they keep as slaves, Dragonsauruses, Urtas, the Eyes of Ilor, Hawkraka, um, a large owl creature there. I'm guessing that's the Hawk Owl. Shadorian Intel, a very intelligent looking creatures. Yule Tree Climbers, Zembarks. I want to tattoo magic. So, magic which is in, put onto your body through the form of tattoos. Um, they can do various effects that power you up by putting the magic into you. So you've got simple tattoos, the magic weapons. You know, you can summon up items out of the tattoos. Different animal tattoos. The powers and monsters. And then we've got the tattooed man occupational character class. Monster men occupational character classes. Undead slayers who are going to use these tattoos as well. We've got stone magic. So a sort of earth elemental powers. 
gem shaping. We've got bio wizardry. Um, various transmutation, augmentation, and reconstruction. So we've got bio borgs here. Bio wizard eyes, microbes, and microparasites. Different ways they can modify people. And that's part of what they do, which makes them very, very alien, is that they take slaves and then they modify them into a purpose by tattoos, by microbes, by various parasites they can attach to people, living organisms and symbiotic organisms. Now you can see this large creature attached to the chest, which uh, threads through the person and gives them basically superpowers. They are massively enhanced. Um, bio wizard weapons, including staffs of power and pacification. All seen. These are very much magical type items, but they are technology. They are created beyond human uh, ability. The Helm of Omnipotence. And we've got rune magic and rune weapons. So items which have magic poured into them. Dragon rods. Lovely, lovely drawings. I love the Sword of Life here. That's the one which is on the back page. Um absolutely gorgeous totally impractical but very very lovely to look at impalers which almost have these claws which grab at the enemy as you stab them dragon thunderer axes we've got rune statues here so different um magic effects you can get through those um back onto the slaves and we've got katani weapons so they're advanced guns a spider defense system. Uh, Kitani powered armor. So that's the serpent powered armor. Because of the long tail. But sort of weapons and things bristling out everywhere. Big spikes. It really looks high tech but organic as well. As does the equestrian powered armor. So you can see the person attaches in the top. But then they're given four legs so they can run faster. They've got all these weapons mounted on there as well as various blades and effects put into their hands. Manling powered armor. Security drones. Basic warp drones. So all the technology that the Kitani bring to the table as part of the Splugorth Empire. Dragon Dreadnought. Now multiple heads all having various effects based on the creatures that they've come across in the magical universe, but they're making technological versions of them. Plasma swords, different bio wizard weapons, cat v hover jets, so a sort of transforming robot plane thing, which is very rifts. Hydrofoil skimmers, and finishing off with a unimotorcycle, which looks very manga to me. And some adverts for products for rifts, and the various Robotech things, which rifts was getting a lot of its tone from absolutely wonderful ideas in there and taking a base idea of Atlantis returning to the world but adding all this stuff on top of it to make it a very very interesting role-playing setting and to transform the entire planet from introducing Atlantis into it. One of the best Rifts books and it was only World Book 2. So many good ideas in here. So that was Rifts Atlantis, and that absolutely dominated the poll this week, with 37% of the vote cast for it. Absolutely miles ahead of the second place, which was The Brotherhood for Mutant Chronicles. Which really surprised me more, because Mutant Chronicles sourcebooks have done terrible in the polls in the last couple of years, usually placing last. So seeing it come second was a big surprise to me. In third place was the Stargazer Tribe book for Werewolf the Apocalypse, a lovely looking source book with the traditional comic book at the start, then going on to the stats and that afterwards. In fourth place was Monsters, Muti and Misfits for Dead Hands, Hell on Earth. And in final place was Karma for Slay Industries. Now it doesn't surprise me that Karma came last, because even though it was only a small part of a video, I have featured Karma before and kind of gone a flick through it in my video about Slay Industries itself. But it would be nice to do a separate video on it, but alas, not this time. Anyway, they're all cleared out of the poll. And I'm doing a retro adventures one because I'm finding it easier to get more excited about the adventures as I haven't really featured these in polls before. Whereas by this point, after years of doing this series, most of the books that I put into the polls, the source books, have been in at least once and have failed. 
So it's sad to see them fail again. Breaks my heart a little. But anyway, this time we're going for all adventures. And the first one up is a doomsday like any other for the Star Trek role playing game, featuring one of the planet killers. Be interesting to have a look through that. Second, we've got Clones in Space for Paranoia, an absolutely amazingly funny adventure for Paranoia. To me, it's perhaps the perfect Paranoia adventure. Next, we've got Death Stark Shadow for Warhammer, which is our fantasy offering, because I'm not going for Dungeons and Dragons and I'm not going for Shadowrun in this one, because they just dominate the polls so much. Next, we've got At Your Door, a Cthulhu Now adventure for Call of Cthulhu, so a modern day one. And last, we've got The Last Submarine for Twilight 2000. With Twilight 2000 being re-released, I wonder if people might be interested in seeing some of the adventures that used to be available for it. But anyway, we'll see which one of those wins, and I'll do a video of them next week. On other channel-related stuff, well, the Discord is active and we're bouncing around ideas. However, obviously because of the false start I got before my mother passed and I couldn't really juggle it, there's very few people interested in it. So I'll be doing some things to uh, stoke up interest and we'll try and get a game going. I've got three or four people interested, which might be enough. I would prefer five players. I think that'd be my perfect, but we'll see how things work out. I might just go for three. It'd be nice to have a small group that I can concentrate on players far more than a larger, more unwieldy group. But we'll see how that works. Other channel related stuff, well, as I said at the start of the video, I'm working on some extra levels for the Patreon with some idiot ideas I've had which will make things a little different. Things which most other YouTubers won't be able to offer you. But anyway, we'll see how that works out. So, I've whittled on for quite long enough as usual. So, thank you very, very much for watching. But most of all, as always, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.